The stress of the world can be too much to bear sometimes. You don't want to have to deal with saving princesses, or restoring the Mushroom Kingdom, or combating whatever disease that was in Dr. Mario. Nope, sometimes your brain can only contemplate two distinct thoughts. Move, and hit things with a hammer. Wrecking Crew is the game for those times. As one of the premier entries in the NES lineup, as well as a member of the Programmable series, more on that later, Wrecking Crew adheres to the rather arcadish concepts of the time. Beat the high score, get more score, score, score. Because when there's a level select right on the top screen, no codes or nothing, that's the only real measure of progress. So how do you rack up the score? You take your hammer, and you hit things! The goal of the game is to break everything that can be broken. Usually this means the cement walls, brick walls, and ladders that comprise part of each stage. Also littered about are non-destructible ladders, platforms, impassable barrels, bombs which annihilate everything near them, Mario Brothers-esque fireballs which occasionally graze the battlefield, the jerk-headed foreman spike, strange sentient wrenches, and eggplant men. You know, Nintendo has a thing for eggplants that I just can't put my finger on. What's the first vegetable stolen from Nana and Popo and Ice Climber? Eggplants. What does Pit turn into in Kid Icarus when he's hit with the eggplant wizard's magic? Well, that one's kind of obvious. What is it? Did Burger Time take all the conventional food? Why not evil poblanos or vicious leeks or other things that go better in soup? Anyway, your only method of dispatching these foes is by dropping barrels on them or opening a door and allowing them to pass into the background layer where they can't hurt you. Though that spike joker isn't above smashing a wall in your face just to knock you down. I'm fairly certain that's a union violation. The problem is that, even if you just want to hit things with a hammer, there's a puzzle-like mentality to the whole experience. Do you take out this ladder now, or leave it there in case you need to shake a wrench off your tail or avoid a fireball? Do you knock down this support, or leave it there? And what about bomb timing? It's more than just a full-on destruction fest, which leads me to... The Design Mode. Yes, it's the programmable series for a reason. In this case, you get to design your own stage from scratch, placing the ladders, targets, foes, and whatnot wherever you desire. You can even save and load your creations if you have a Famicom Data Recorder tape drive. Ever seen a Commodore data set? Exactly. But since I'm speaking English and you're probably not considering importing a Famicom complete with FDR and a copy of this game, the net result is there are also two options that cause the game to crash. This is fixed, however, for the virtual console releases both on Wii and 3DS. Wrecking Crew is one of those games with a whole lot more depth than you're immediately ready to notice. Especially as the levels get higher, the likelihood of you needing a rage reset because you, or that jerk face spike, knocked down the only ladder that would get you up to the top of the stage just grows and grows. Each phase is its own puzzle, which requires something between insight, rote memorization, and a burning desire to take your hammer and knock things down. A sequel, Wrecking Crew 98, was produced for the Super Famicom in, well, I'll let you guess the year. Saw a very small production run, though, and is currently going for about a hundred bucks on most auction sites. Maybe if the jolly fat man is kind to me this winter, I'll be able to pick up a copy. Maybe. Or I'll just hit him with a hammer. 